up Steve Levy. Sudden death for one team, sudden life for another. And our first whistle of overtime, eight seconds in, Morris back for the touch, they'll bring it back down deep into the Minnesota end. Those who have been heroes in playoff overtime action, Richard Park's goal, of course, coming just 24 hours ago. Unbelievable how you have to go back to the room and regroup, and boy, you look at the playoff overtime goals, Super J from Burnaby, BC, has got four, Forsberg three, Keane has got a couple as well. Sometimes it comes from that unlikely hero, like you mentioned, Richard Park of Minnesota in last night's game. Here's Hayduke on it now. Out there with Forsberg and Sackett on the far side. Morris pinched in deep, kept the puck in the Minnesota end. Here's Hayduke, Mitchell on him, back to the point. Here's Forsberg now, trying to self-pass off the net, but didn't work that time. Up the near side, and Anthony Loxon will move ahead. Here's Pascal Dupuis, fanned on his shot, fanned on his pass attempt. And Colorado will break the wrong side. Here's second, feathered it across, and Walls knocked it out of midair. Susan the other way from Minnesota. Let's it go, wow, cool and calm. We'll hang on. Smart play. Keep it in the webbing. Get a whistle. Let things calm down. Don't just play the puck for the sake of playing it. Into that shift before Peter went off. He got dumped. He's becoming more and more active, obviously, in this game. Tried to draw a penalty at the end of regulation time in front of the net. And he's a lot of emotions, communication, talking to the officials. Clearly, the penalties that have been called in this game have frustrated the players on the ice. The takedown was on your left, but look at this play by Wes Walsh. What a play by Walsh, coming back, intercepting that pass. Loose puck, back to the point. Susan with a stick check with Heino down, and it's cleared out. Here's a chance with Heino. The Minnesota native has a step shot, Sammy Fernandez. And he'll hang on. Oh, smart little play by Jeff Shantz in the neutral zone. You know, Shantz in that limited role has played well. Winning face-offs, made a smart play. Just dump it over here. I know it's a bouncing puck, nothing much, but play it to the boards. See if you can get something going with some speed. And High Note does so. Tries to go between the legs there with that puck bouncing like crazy. Look at that, great footwork there. Wow. I know it might not have been real popular returning to Elks River, Minnesota during the offseason if he had just potted that overtime game winner. I know trying to go ahead on the face up. DeVries keeps it in. Oh, through traffic, loose puck. And it's off the shin pad of Park. Heavy hit by Heino. Shot, stick save, Fernandez. Heino just buried walls into the boards. And it comes out to center for Adam Foote. Line changes now are so important. They're so significant. Good timely changes. On man break. Here's one. Hayden rips it. Save by Fernandez and clear. And it will roll on going while will cover up and gets a nice shower from Sergei Zolta. I don't know how that play develops. Oh, Minnesota's going off for a line change. Look at that left side of your screen. Just Yikes! Just what you were talking about. Holy jumping. Now, and there was a fourth player joining the rush. And Milan Hayduke didn't see the defense. I believe that was Adam Foot joining it. So all it was was a pop gun offense. One shot, nothing more than that. Oh boy, should have been better than that. Dupuis will get in the circle. Brother Hendrickson will take the face off. He goes ahead on chance. Blake ties up his man. Hendrickson trying to feather it through, unable to do so. Good second effort by Shantz, and that leads to this. Here's Bates Battaglia. Battaglia shot, and a save by Fernandez. Second behind the net. For Battaglia, missed it on the near side. Here's Blake with a chance now. Blake for Reinbrecht. There's Battaglia, shoved into the boards by young Nick Schultz. You talk about the experience some of the younger wild players are getting. How about this? Son of death overtime in the game seven. Here's Blake. as to who would shoot that puck. And Blake still got it away, and Fernandez said, I don't think so. And you got to know that Rob Blake, the proud veteran, wants to redeem himself after taking that charging penalty that led to the game time goal. Terrific curl up move by Joe Sackett. Great on the tape. You're right. Ryan Frick thought it was for him, but that helped them. In the end, it helped them because finally they had a lane to the net. <laughs> Someone wasn't blocking a shot in the green jersey. Good hard blast by Blake, and a wonderful glove save by Manny. Off the draw, kicked out of the circle. Here's Tangay, makes the move, put it through the 
crease. It's all Colorado here early in overtime. Shots are 6-1 in favor of the Avalanche. Well down at center ice. Here's Hayduk now. You shorten the benches. Here's Brunette. Blind drop pass. There's a turnover in the neutral zone. Forsberg will pick it up. Foot and Gabrick exchange shoves away from the puck. Forsberg turns it over to Brunette. Hayduk will backhand it in. Oh, and in this, this play to Tange. Shank the shot off the end of his stick. Here's Tange now. Down on him. Up the far side, Mars will keep it in. Tange let it go. Centering feed is broken up by Sekarash. Here's Keen on it. And it's taken away. Sergei Zoltak from Minnesota. Here's Brunette. Brunette's in. Andrew Brunette shot score. Andrew Brunette in sudden death overtime. And Minnesota is moving on. Ladies and gentlemen. Disappointment for the Avalanche, a team set up, especially considering the defending champs were knocked out by Anaheim. Sackick and Forsberg gave it everything they had. They ran into one of the more unique and more resilient teams that I've seen. I can't believe people are throwing stuff over there towards the wild on the ice. And what an outstanding play by Andrew Burnett. Zoltak gained the line, draw pass to Burnett. He goes wide. Patience. I got time. Bring it to the backhand and go beyond Patrick Waugh. A little curl, a little toe drag, and he buys himself time because Waugh's sliding to the right. And Andrew Burnett is looking up to the skies. That is unbelievable. And no one will appreciate it more than Andrew Brunette. This was his first playoff appearance dating back to 1996 when he was a member of the Capitals. And this will be a difficult defeat to swallow for Joe Sackick and the proud Colorado Avalanche. Patrick Waugh has never lost a Game 7 in overtime and he won his first as a 20-year-old in 1986. This has got to be stunning. They've got to have an empty, sick feeling in the middle of their stomachs right now. Folks, it is like a funeral here at the Pepsi Center in Denver. 45 shots for the Avalanche. Andrew Burnett's the individual offensive hero scoring the goal. Defensively, though, Manny Fernandez. That save on Rob Blake in overtime. What a group. These are a bunch of castoffs nobody wanted for crying out loud. What a star-studded avalanche team with three times the payroll <laughs> of the Minnesota Wild. And Minnesota will be the perfect example of fiscal responsibility in the NHL. Let's go down to the ice. Here's Dave Ryan. A very so happy Razor, I still got Andrew Brunette. So Razor, I still got some hair. <laughs> in long you, you've won this playoff series. Tell us about the goal. What was the situation that let you pot the game winner tonight, Andrew? It's just, uh, you know, Zola's carrying the puck and been waiting for a bounce like that all series and, uh, you know, got in there and, and uh, you know, it's just a blur. I mean, I just instincts took over and, uh, I mean, I'm just so happy. I'm having the time of my life, and it was just great to finish it off that way. How in the world do you overcome this powerful Avalanche team on paper? They're the big favorite. You came back time and time again. What was the key to this big victory for you? I think sticking to our game plan. We never wavered. Uh, we lost two games at home. Uh, they went down 3-1, and we didn't change. We came out uh, more resilient than ever. And I think for the first time in the playoffs, you know, last three games we played with desperation, something we didn't do in the, uh, the first four. Why were you so confident coming back time and time again? You had to do it again twice, not just once tonight, but the comebacks. How'd you do that? I don't know. I mean, we, like I said, we have a great team. We're a team. We're 20 guys. We got no superstars. We're guys that work hard and, and never give up. And that's why we're in the NHL. And, and uh, you know, a lot of the, all that guys in our team is their second, third chance to prove something. And, uh, you know, we had a lot to prove tonight. How good was Manny in that making some big saves for you in the crucial situations? Manny came in and uh, was unbelievable every game he played. So was Roley. I mean, that's the kind of goaltending we got all year, and uh, 
you know, some of the saves Manny made tonight were uh, pretty special. Enjoy the win on the charter flight back. Thank you very much. Andrew Brunette, game winner for Minnesota in Game 7 tonight, guys. <laughs> Dave Brunette, Panger, you mentioned these are a bunch of cast-offs. Brunette has played <laughs> for three of the four most recent expansion teams, Nashville, Atlanta, and he's a hero in Minnesota oh. tonight. And, and he shows his offensive instincts. Uh, he's not the quickest guy in the world, but he does have some wonderful hands. He sees the ice, takes that draw pass, and Joel Tuck did everything by going right hard to the net. Blake has to veer off for that. Morris gets caught in a bit of a pick situation, and they end up behind Brunette, and he ends up...